guys today we are going to color a mushroom from the mushroom coloring chart in paint tool sci um, i've opened the mushroom coloring chart in sci right now i'm just using the uh, square selection tool to pick which mushroom i want to do i think today i'm going to go with a toadstool it's pretty uh basic coloring to get people um, comfortable and familiar with the program uh, you'll see here in a minute that I merge all the layers just so I can copy this. Um, I deleted the white background layer, then I merged everything else so I could copy it and put it on its own canvas. Uh, I'm not sure why you can't see what I'm doing when I go up into the top bar where it says File Edit Canvas, but I will we'll try to tell you as we're going along so you don't um, lose track. So I'm going back over here just to shut the mushroom chart down now that we have our toadstool on a new canvas. Uh, luckily when you paste it goes onto a new, its own layer so you don't have to make a new layer. Now I've added another layer below the mushroom and I've made the mushroom layer um, preserve opacity and selection source which you just saw. Now I'm going in and I'm going to color in the uh, mushroom with just a basic color. I've used the magic wand clicked inside the mushroom, hit selection, increment one, increment one, that way it gets under the black outline a bit, and then I flood filled. Now I've deselected it, and I'm going in with just a paintbrush tool set to 20, and filling in uh, the grass down at the bottom, because when we select it with the magic wand tool, it, do, it does not, um, you know, I didn't click inside this grass because it would have just picked the whole page. And then just use kind of light strokes here to feather the um, grassy area out a bit with your brush tool and your pen tablet. Uh, this, this is where the pressure sensitivity on your tablet comes in very handy. And now we're going to the bottom layer. I'm going to try to find a nice uh, low saturation color to fill the background in with. This helps um, keep the colors we choose for the mushroom nice and crisp and uh, blending well. So then I've added a new layer. I've clicked it as clipping group. Um, I've clicked clipping group to make sure that nothing I color on this layer will go outside of the um, area I've colored with that light uh, peachy color. So Hopefully I'm explaining that right, but if you notice, you can't color outside of that. Now we're taking a red, and we are just going to go in and um, fill. We select it inside the toadstool's top. We hit increment one twice. We filled that in, and then we went in and just uh, colored in any little spots we might have missed. Now I've added a new layer. I've checked off clipping group and I'm using a green to come in and do the grassy area towards the bottom. Uh, you don't have to be super careful, but I, I am a little bit. And as you can see, you can flick all the way out side to side and the green isn't going to go um, outside of the area that's pre-colored. Not the background, but the uh, light peachish beige whatever area. Alright, now we're going to go down and make it, get a smaller brush and fill in any small areas that we didn't get with the bigger one. Alright, go up to the line art layer, which is where you have preserve opacity and selection source set, and lower the opacity to around 15%, just somewhere where you can um, still see the lines, but you can also uh, see the color you're putting beneath them. 15% uh, works pretty good for me. And now we're just going to go in and fill in, uh, make sure all the line, the outlines are colored in on the green layer. Next, we will go in and um, add another layer. Well, we've merged down everything, including the white, but not the background or the outline. All right, and we're choosing a shadow color. And for this, I went with a... Uh, yellow, low saturation yellow beige color. And I realized I hadn't been saving my colors on the palette, so that's what you're seeing me do now. 
Uh, when you find colors you like, you might want to put it in the little box next to your mushroom that I've uh, provided on the color chart. That way you can always come back to it later. The colors that you save in the palette uh, of the system will stay, but you're probably going to want to erase them in time so that way you can add different colors to the palette for other images you're coloring. So now we're taking the um, darker beige color and we're going in and adding some broad shadows. Uh, these aren't going to be the darkest shadows. They're, we're basically just determining where we want the shadow to be in the very, you know, in the first place. This isn't, um, these are just broad, very broad shadows. So you don't have to worry about being too super neat with this. As you can see, I'm not. Um, and again, we're just using a brush tool set at 20. Uh, it's a good size for this. But I, I actually use the brush tool for even uh, at 20 for a lot of my bigger stuff too. I just like having a little more control. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. You may discover you like uh, your, your paintings to be a little looser. That's not bad. But for this, we're, um, we were set at 20. We've changed it up to 9 so we can get into some little tight spots with those shadows. So we're still on the brush tool, we're size 9, and we're going in and just filling in any of the smaller areas um, that need shadows. And I am not that great at explaining, so I, I suggest just you know, basically doing what you see me doing more so than um, focusing too much on what I'm saying. I'm a visual learner, and I am better at visual teaching, I guess. And I'm using light strokes here. I'm not pushing down real hard. I want the light pressure sensitivity. Um, you'll find with a lot of your coloring that you do kind of uh, use a light stroke. You don't uh, push down very hard on your tablet or whatever you're, you know, drawing on. All right, now I'm playing with the filters. Now I've changed it from multiply to shade, and I set the opacity to 57%. Uh, I sometimes I'll use multiply, but usually I use shade. Uh, it gives it, it just darkens it, and um, I don't know. I like how it, I like the effect. It gives a good shadow effect. And then we go in with the watercolor brush set to 30, and we just start blending and softening these um, shadowed areas we've done. Uh, if you're working on a bigger image or bigger sections, you might want to make your watercolor brush a little bigger. Uh, it sort of uh, dampens the color a little more the bigger it gets. Add a new layer, make it a clipping group, go back to the brush tool. We're still at size 20. We're going to make this um, taupe color a little darker. And then we're going to come in and we're going to do some deeper shadows. Uh, it's not... Um, shade and we're going to set this one to 66 65 uh, ultimately I'm giving you the the stuff I'm using feel free to play around and figure out if you like something else better uh, there's always multiple ways to do stuff when it comes to um, art creativity stuff like that uh, that's pretty much part of doing art is trying different things experimenting uh, ha just have fun but yeah, so this is my settings. I want a little darker beige. I uh, set it to shade, set it to 66, and now we're going in. And I'm going between size 20 brush and size 9 brush for, the, for this particular mushroom on the brush tool. Now we're going to go to the watercolor tool. I'm setting it to 20 just so I can soften up the edges of these new darker shadows. And remember, we're just using light pressure. We're not pushing down too hard. Um, pressure sensitivity is really the best part of using a pen tablet. Once upon a time, I used a mouse to do um, cartoon dolls and stuff, and boy, that was not as much fun as the pen tablet which I did eventually get into even while I was doing cartoon dolls. Alright we're still on our new shade level and we're just going to go in and do some little 
sort of um, light strokes through the grass area. Which is, it's just imagine you're drawing uh, lines of grass. You don't have to be no perfection or um, you know, there's no real rhyme or reason. Just go, try to go with the flow that's already there. Go in the direction you see the grass going. Uh, create sort of a shadow under the spiky part. Uh, back to the watercolor tool so we can soften this up a bit. This, again, this is just laying down um, some of the basic shadows. This, none of this has really been detail work. So don't worry about being too much of a perfectionist. Now here I don't like the shadow I had on that piece of grass poking up. So I took the eraser tool set to four and I've just gone in and sort of erased the shadow from both of the shadow layers over that tall blade of grass. Now we're back to the brush tool and we're on the um, lower shadow, the lighter shadow. And we're just gonna go add some little circles to the bottom of the mushroom uh, not the bottom of the mushroom, but the bottom of the little dots on the mushroom. I'm not even sure what the word for this is, but now use the watercolor tool, set to 20, and just blend and soften those uh, shadowed areas on the, maybe it's a polyp? That might be what they're called. I don't know. If you know what they're called, feel free to educate me. But don't tell me to Google it, because if I wanted to Google it, I would have already. <laughs> So there we go. Now we're on the second, the darker shadow layer, and we're just adding some more of that shadow on the little polyps is what I'm going to call them. I could be wrong, but we'll see. I'm sure somebody will tell me. Yep, and this is where we're really starting to define um, a little better. These, this this level of shadow gives gives the mushroom a little more definition. See, we're focusing on the lines that are um, provided by the outline. You see, just sort of follow them along. And don't forget the little ruffle, the shadows in the ruffled um, bits of the mushroom. And you're not going to rush through this stuff. I know a lot of people give up when um, art stuff and crafts and whatnot because it's not fast. It's not something they can do and, you know, do it all and really quick, much less do and be very good at very quickly. It takes time. It takes practice. And even when you're well practiced and very good at something, you're still going to have to invest time to get a good result. So, um, you know, make sure you're cutting out a little bit of time each day if you don't have a lot of time just to get in and do as much as you can. You don't have to finish, you know, particularly with digital painting, you don't have to finish everything in one sitting. You can always save and come back when you have more time to work on it. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about digital painting. All right, we're just going in with the watercolor tool set to 10 and we're blending out those darker shadows on the polyps. And you see we're, we've already got so much dimension on this mushroom. Um, you're, it's starting to really come to life and that is what shading does. It brings everything to life. Now we zoomed out and have a good look at it. Looking good. Now we're adding a new layer. And I think that, yeah, this is where I go in and uh, do the red outline on the uh, cap, the mushroom cap. And I'm just using the same red we filled the mushroom cap in with. We're going through and rounding out uh, the little polyps a bit. I think for me I think it's better to have the red over or under the outline um, than to have the white but really you could do it either way because later on we're going to come in with um, highlighting and stuff and really make these polyps pop and whatnot. And probably I'm going to discover that these are not called polyps <laughs> and this whole video is going to be just utterly embarrassing. But for now, it's okay. 
in fairyland we make up our own words so yeah and don't be afraid to reshape um, your polyps or really any part of your image because the line art is there as a framework as a guide but it's not hard and fast you can always uh, switch things up uh, at the end you can either keep it very low opacity or just delete it all together and then it won't matter anyway uh, it really depends on for me on what I've how much time I've been able to put in whether I think the line art contributes to the final piece um, I put thought into it whether I keep the you know very low opacity line art or not and here we are still just shaping out these um, polyps on the mushroom there we go and now we have a red mushroom cap and I'm still going through and shaping up these polyps a bit with the red and I don't want them perfectly round um, but I do because you know if you look at the if you pull out a reference photo of a toadstool you'll see that they really aren't uh, you know usually perfectly round they're kind of different so make sure that you're zooming out from time to time to see what you've got going on I've now I've merged down the um, red that we just did into the base colors we've added a new layer we're lowering the opacity of the outline layer to five we need less of that outline to guide us at this point and then on the new layer we created let's set that to luminosity and we're going to pull out the color we used for the body of the mushroom and use that for our highlights uh, the luminosity filter is going to do a lot of the work for us alternatively if you don't want to use filters you could just use white but you won't get that same um, it doesn't blend as well just straight out white doesn't seem to blend as well and we're just adding some small dots some little highlights on these polyps and then watercolor pen, watercolor brush set to 10 and we're blending this out gently very gently we don't want to lose the highlight lowering it till it looks natural um, if you keep the luminosity too high it's going to look real garish and sometimes that's perfect sometimes when you want um, things to glow or seem eth real ethereal then you know a high luminosity setting works out really well but for this I'm trying to go natural and just uh, limit things so we're back down to the darker shadow and I realize I just want to make these uh, polyps over on the far side of the mushroom a little darker to go with the shading and I go back up to the luminosity layer oh hold on yeah, well I went to darken the line art so I can see better what I'm doing down here so I set the line art up to 21% that way I can go back to the luminosity layer and start adding highlights over the lines that uh, are guidelines as you can see here now I've turned that off and I can see what I've uh, accomplished don't really need it as much here now we're adding uh, just sort of outlining the polyps a little bit with these with this illuminated this uh, luminosity layer I get some pretty little polyps I mean whoever thought you'd hear that together pretty little polyps now as you can see I didn't add the um, shading lines to this little piece under the cap you can keep your lines up while you do that um, you know that use that outline layer as a guide as much as you need to or as little as you need to it's it's really about your needs and uh, how much it can serve you. There we go. Gonna blend that out a little bit. 
And you may think that it's, um, it's not necessarily intuitive to add highlights in your shadow section, but what that's called is reflective highlighting. So even though that is a dark um, area in the shading, it's still going to have a little reflection from the light areas uh, sort of adjacent. And that is why I like to add a little bit of highlights in my darker um, areas. Now here we are just going along the edge. We're making the uh, brush tool a size 4 now, so we can just get the tiniest outlines on these polyps. Just like so. Look how those, look how that highlight really makes those polyps down there in the shadows pop out. I mean, that's, you know, really cool. Now we're going to add some highlights to this little ruffle under the mushroom cap. And we're also going to go in and add some more shading on the darkest layer. The dark, darkest shadow layer, that would be the uh, 65 or 66 percent shadow layer. And just go in bring it down look anywhere where you think that the definition uh, is lacking and just add a little more shadow like I'm doing here and you just see how these how shadow and light is really what brings um, your art piece to life. Just even if you know you don't add color, just the contrast, the levels, really gives it all three dimension and brings it to life. And don't forget your little um, I call them fins hanging off the toadstool's body but whatever it's called you make sure you can get in there and get some more definition in there and we have lots of these fins All right, I turned on I turned the line art layer back on so I could see down here but I uh, and then I went back up to, I'm still in the line art layer and I'm just kind of playing with the uh, opacity so I can see what I'm doing just adding more uh, shadows here I think this is when I realize it might be time for another layer of shadow just to get some detail down in those um, darkest shadow spots so I add a new layer turn it to shade and I'm just leaving it at 100 while I do this. Uh, we're not going to keep it this dark. We'll play with it a little bit after we um, get this laid in. There we go. Now we see where we have the lines. Remember, don't be... Um, I lowered the shading for this level, for this layer down to 38%. And don't be afraid to go off your guidelines you can you know maybe you're coloring and you're like you know I really don't like this I want to change this up some you, you're always you know that's always a possibility for you and when you're doing digital painting it's a lot easier because you can always just duplicate your guideline make the changes on the new copy uh, the new layer and then if you don't like it you can always go back to your original so it's handy now we're down in the watercolor size 10, uh, blending 58, dilution 69, persistence 18, which I should have told you earlier, um, and just softening everything up a bit. I will try to remember to put the uh, details down in the 
blog post attached to this um, until I get better at making these videos and remember to like write a script or something so I don't forget stuff. And we're just darkening up these shadows with the brush tool. I had it set to four to sort of draw them in. Now I've got the brush tool set to nine to fill them in. And we're back to the watercolor tool set to 10, size 10, uh, just to blend things out and smooth them, smooth it down. And I went down to the shadow layer with that little uh, under under the skirt thing under the mushroom cap to blend that out some. Now I go back up to the darkest shadow layer, which is um, sh shade 38 percent it says on there, and kind of add a little more uh, detail. There we go. Get a little more darkness to show the separation between the mushroom cap and the little uh, skirt hanging off of it. Lord, I hope I'm not confusing the crap out of you guys. A little more darkness on the mushroom cap here. Uh, the more contrast you can create in your coloring, the more realistic it's going to look. <laughs> Alright, zoom out and have a look. See where there's things you might want to add or change. Decided I want to go in and add um, some more texture to this grass at the bottom. with the darkest shadow. And, and don't, uh, again, this is, this is one of those places where you probably don't want to go um, stick with the lines too much because you want the grass to feel organic and natural. Alright, let's go to the luminosity shade, brush tool, size 4. And we're just going to go in and add some light grass. And you kind of want it to go one way, but not entirely just one way. Um, grass is a wild thing. It grows how it wants. And make sure that you're adding some of this lighter grass in to the shadow um, area as well. You, know, you don't want to completely cover it, but it helps with the uh, dimension depth. As you can see it's kind of loud. Zoom out again and look and play with the luminosity till you have something you like. Alright, now we're just going to add a little more highlights to the, um, a little bit more highlight to the mushroom cap. I did that with a brush, I believe it was size 20. I didn't like it, so I undid it. And I go in with the watercolor set to 50 and just blend that little tiny bit up there out. We are having a look at it um, zoomed out a bit again. Alright, now we are going to start working on a background. I added a new layer right above that brown background. Now with the brush tool and green, we're just going to go scribble some in here and there. Putting some color down. Now we're using the brown we were uh, shading with. Now we're going to throw in some red. And as you can see for the background, I'm just pulling colors out of the uh, image that we've already used. Now go to watercolor, set it to 350 and just lightly smudge it around. Get a nice soft glow behind the mushroom. And now we're going to crop it for a nice composition. 
And you go into um, edit and crop. I've merged the layers here. And there we go. Or it might have been canvas and crop. All right, now the last thing you need to do is add a new layer, brush tool size four to six, and add your name or your initials, however you want to do it. I'm going to do just my initials and the year. And then I'm going to set that to multiply and scoot it down into the graph so it's not so, um, so it doesn't stand out so much. And you are done. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.